welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new if you are hello my name's Hermione and I'm currently fixing up this dilapidated old Victorian house which is slightly less dilapidated now but it still needs a heck of a lot of work oh boy does it need work so um, today I'm gonna do another DIY-ery episode because I left the house for a few months I didn't touch it didn't do anything to it just kind of lived with it now I'm ready to get back in and <laughs> just really get stuck into some of these smaller renovation projects before I start on the work upstairs also this video is very kindly being sponsored by octopus energy it was about time I switched my energy supplier so this is perfect timing and I'm definitely saving myself some money I will tell you guys about that a bit more when I reach the hallway and the electric box <laughs> anyway let's jump in I am in my breakfast nook because the first thing I've been doing is working on the kitchen. Okay so I'm in my kitchen now and if you saw my last DIY-ery it was kind of a house tour of what the house looked like in its current state and the kitchen although functional was pretty grim. The floors in particular were very grim. So I set out to finally sort the floors out and I was really impressed with how quick it was and I kind of annoyed at myself that I didn't do it sooner. So here's one more floor staining montage because I don't think I have any more to do after this. So this is what the floor is looking like after the second coat. It's looking so much better. So I've done it in two halves because I'm going to move all of this furniture onto this side of the floor once this is dry and then I'm going to do this hopefully within a day and the fridge needs to, fingers crossed it's going to come all the way over here so I don't have to unplug it but uh, yeah, I'll check back in with you at some point. Sorry but look how nice this is, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So I've been moving everything from here to here and into the hallway so I can clear this and stain the floor. Just need to move that and the fridge. However, I need to take all the vases down first. And this, which I'm surprised so many people noticed I had on top of my fridge in my last kitchen video. But there we go. <laughs> So this is what the floor is looking like now. It looks so much better. I cannot get over how much of a difference it makes in this kitchen. It just looked so bad for so long that I'm just so pleased it's finally done. All I need to do now is put a runner here. I have a pink one, but I think I might put the one from the hallway here because it's nice and long. Speaking of which, I did a rug wash yesterday. So, let's put this down. Boom! And that's the runner in place. This one's actually from the hallway, so I'm gonna have to shuffle some other ones around. But I really like it here. I like having it in front of the sink area because this gets a lot of foot traffic, so it will protect the floors a bit. So that's the floor. It makes a colossal difference in the space. It feels a lot more homey now. And all I really have to do in terms of bigger projects in the kitchen is the skirting board, which I've been avoiding. But the other thing I've been avoiding, I actually managed to do yesterday, and that's the back of the door. So a while ago, I filled all the holes and I sanded it down and I got it nice and smooth, but then I never found the time to paint it. So. I finally got around to doing that recently and I'm really, really pleased I did because I don't know what I'm gonna do about this door, whether I'm gonna keep it or not because the other side doesn't look great, but at least for the time being, the kitchen looks a lot nicer. I had the paint lying around anyway, so why not use it and finish this project off and make the kitchen look a little bit tidier. It really only took me about an hour and three coats of paint that I already had, so why not? And this is what the door is looking like now. It makes a huge difference compared to what it looked like before. It was so gross before and so stained. And now it's a nice crisp 
white. If I decide to keep this door and fix the other side of it, which I probably will, there are a few small cracks and imperfections that I will fill when I do the other side and I need to get a piece of dowel to fit in this hole and cover that up. But now it's working <laughs> as the door handle. The other side isn't too bad actually, except I had the fantastic idea of using a heat gun to strip some of the paint. I should have just left it and gently sanded it. So I'm gonna try and fix that because this door isn't too bad. I will just need a little bit of molding for this panel right here. It's not perfect at all, but it looks so much better and it's only going to improve when I finish the other side of it. As you can see, I also tried to cover the patches of the tester paint that I put on the wall, but the paint I used has a glossy finish, so I need to go over this again. Um, but I have started covering over them because I think I'm just gonna leave the walls white. It's the only room in the house that I have a brilliant white on the walls, and I think it makes the space feel quite bright and airy. Let's move into the hallway, shall we? In the hallway, I've only changed a couple of tiny little things. There was a big flowery print that I had up here that I love, but I really wanted to move it into the guest bedroom because it's looking a bit boring up there and I'm not doing a makeover on it just yet. So I've put it up there for the time being and I've replaced it with this David Hockney print that I picked up in the Tate Modern the other day. I just filled this frame that I borrowed from my bedroom and put it up here. I'll probably switch them around again Again in the next few weeks. I always move things around. It's a curse. But I really like it and I feel that maybe because it's a bit more neutral it brightens the space up a bit more which is necessary at the moment because I've got these massive boxes. <laughs> I'll explain those in a minute but they are making the space feel very dark and dingy and small and I don't think they're going anywhere for about a month or so, knowing me. <laughs> but this is what the area is looking like right now. I've just added the prints and then I've brought these faux hydrangeas in from my dining room. I put them away at Christmas time because I felt like they were too summery, so I've brought them back out. And the boxes. Okay, so I've got two of these, one here and one leaning up outside the kitchen. <laughs> And in these big old boxes, I have doors. These are for the bedrooms upstairs, the guest bedroom and the master. Those doors are not salvageable at all. So I've picked up two of exactly the same door, but brand new from B&Q. They're just pine doors. I need to prime them, <laughs> paint them, and then get somebody to help me hang them. So I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. So they might be here for a while, but that's next on the list. I'd been meaning to order those for like three months and I didn't do it, um, but now they're here. <laughs> As for these doors, I don't wanna bore you with door talk for too long because I always do and then I cut it out with the video because I'm like, so boring. Um, I always have a dilemma about these doors, but uh, long story short, I think I'm gonna get them professionally stripped and then repaint and prime them. I think most of the ones downstairs are salvageable. The kitchen, I think I can patch that one and it will look good, but these two I'm gonna get stripped. A lot of people said to take them off the hinges and have it open concept, which I really like the idea of, and I was thinking about that, but then over the winter it was so cold, and I think the reason that these old Victorian houses have such big heavy doors is because it keeps the heat in in the winter and it allows you to keep the electricity and the gas bills down a bit. So yeah, I'm gonna have to keep the doors up, but I'm gonna fix them. We're on the path to fixing the doors. We're getting there. Speaking of energy bills, oh what a smooth segue into an ad. <laughs> um, Octopus Energy are very kindly sponsoring today's video. It was about time that I looked to see if I could get a better energy deal for my electricity. I'd been in the house for about a year and I was paying a little bit more than I'd like. And every year once your contract is up, as you guys probably know, if you live in your own home, you can shop around and see if you can get a better deal with your gas and your electricity. So I switched my electricity to Octopus and it was so easy to do. I am saving myself some money and they have loads of really interesting green initiatives as well. So I picked the green plan um, and it was so easy, you guys. 
it was so easy it took me about two or three minutes to actually get everything transferred over i was so worried that it would be a long process with lots of letters and back and forth between my energy suppliers and yeah it wasn't at all all i did was gave octopus all of my details and they did it all for me it was so simple my old energy supplier contacted me to tell me that they were sorry i was leaving and i'm now with octopus and all i had to do after that was they sent me an email i input my meter reading bing bang boom i am now switched and saving some money and there's loads of really exciting perks while being an octopus customer every month when you submit a meter reading you can spin the wheel of fortune which could give you a chance to win a bit of money off of your bill every single month it's so easy for me to check my balance on my account see what kind of energy i've used and just everything's all there in one place it is so so handy if you'd like to know a bit more about them i'll leave them in a link in the description below and you can check them out they've got some really affordable energy pricing plans and they've got some green initiatives too so um do give them a look they are in the down bar oh this is just a small something something that is new in the house but let me show you something in the sitting room so i've got my fireplace and the mantle and underneath i have this fire guard which i found in the dining room under a massive pile of stuff this was given to me by some family members who are moving and I really like it. It looks quite modern in comparison to the traditional fireplace, but I quite like the contrast. Not that I have a working fireplace or anything. Maybe I can light those candles and just pretend, but yeah. So that's everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you liked seeing all of the little projects I've been tackling around the house recently. With this DIY series now that all the big stuff is done and the huge, huge renovation projects are over with, I've still got some bigger projects, but I've got lots of smaller ones like bedside table makeovers and things to um, show you guys. So to keep the series going, um, I might sprinkle some smaller bits in with the bigger projects just to, you know, show you guys what's happening around the house as it progresses. Anyway, if that's everything, I think, yeah, I think I'm done. So with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and um, happy DIYing. <laughs> Bye.